Hi, I'm Rishi Ghosh with the planning tip of the week. We want to take some time to understand tax loss harvesting. Deploying a well-diversified portfolio means that while some stocks perform well, there will be other stocks that decline in value based on certain market conditions. It is important to plan ahead with strategies that could provide meaningful tax savings. Tax loss harvesting is the timely selling of investments at a loss to offset the amount of capital gains tax due to the sale of other investments at a gain. Capital gains are the profits you realize when you sell an investment for more than you paid for it, and capital losses are the losses you realize when you sell an investment for less than you paid for it. For many investors, tax loss harvesting can be an important tool for reducing their overall tax liabilities. Tax loss harvesting generally works like this. You sell an investment that has underperformed and declined in value, then you use that investment loss to reduce your taxable capital gains and potentially offset up to $3,000 of your ordinary income. Finally, you reinvest the money from the sale into a different security that meets your investment needs and overall asset allocation strategy. Let's go over an example to better understand tax loss harvesting. In reviewing your investment portfolio, you see that Fund A has a gain of $30,000 and Fund B has a loss of $15,000. Tax loss harvesting is a method to consider offsetting these gains. If you sell Fund A that has gains of $30,000 and then you use the losses of Fund B of $15,000, your $15,000 loss would offset the $30,000 gain. By doing this efficiently, your total taxable capital gains would be lowered to $15,000. Oftentimes, we see that investors only sell the minimum amount needed in their portfolio in order to help them reach their goals. In this example, if the investor were to sell only Fund A that has a $30,000 gain, the full $30,000 would be considered a capital gain and would be taxable. By utilizing tax, tax loss harvesting strategies in this situation, your total capital gains bill for the calendar year would be reduced to a tax bill of $2,250 versus a tax bill of $4,500, thus saving the family potentially $2,250. In addition to potentially lowering your capital gains bill, if you ever find your portfolio in a position where the loss is larger than the gain, you can use the remaining loss to offset up to $3,000 of your ordinary taxable income which means if you have $50,000 in taxable income, you can factor in your capital loss to reduce your capital income to $47,000. Amounts over $3,000 can be carried forward to future tax years to offset income later. As with any tax-related topic, there are rules and limitations and each individual situation would need to be reviewed with your advisor. The general principle behind tax loss harvesting is pretty straightforward, but you need to consider these rules. Tax loss harvesting is not intended for retirement accounts such as 401k plans or IRAs because you cannot deduct the losses generated in a qualified tax deferred account. There are other restrictions on using specific types of losses to offset certain gains. A long-term loss would first be applied to a long-term gain and a short-term loss would be applied to a short-term gain. If there are excess losses in one category, these can then be applied to the gains of either type. Beware of the wash sale rule, stating a loss cannot be realized for tax purposes if a substantially identical position was bought within 30 days before or after the sale. As a practical example, an investor could sell an actively managed equity fund and redeploy the sales proceeds into an equity index fund. In doing so, the investor would recognize a tax loss while also keeping similar but not identical portfolio exposure. Working with your trusted advisor to harvest losses proactively can save you money over the long run. That's the planning tip of the week this week. I'm Rishi Ghosh, and we'll be back.